Alright, so it's been a little bit while since I made like a serious science video, but um, this one is hopefully going to be the first in a series of bioinformatics videos. Um, this one is specifically on DNA microarrays and actually how to analyze them using a program called R. So let's take a look at R and some of its uh, functionality and syntax and um, we'll talk a little bit about some of the plots that it can generate for uh, DNA microarray analysis. So this is the R environment and it's essentially a calculator program. So let's type in a variable and then feed it a number. So we said that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. And then we're going to say that z plus is x plus y. And then we'll see that the output of z is going to be 5 because 2 plus 3 is 5. So now we're going to actually pull in a library that uh, will help us, so it's actually necessary for us to analyze our microarray data. Um, it's called Simple AFI. It's part of the Bioconductors uh, AFI package. If uh, you don't have it, you can actually load it by saying BioC Light uh, Simple AFI in quotes, as I've written here below. But if it loads properly, it'll show you how it's loaded. So we're going to pull in our um, what's called a covdesk file. We're going to pull in the data from that, and I'm going to show you how the the proper way to set up a covdesk file. I usually just call it treat.txt. It's a tab delimited file, but um, we're going to use the uh, simple affi command read annotated data frame uh, read dot capital annotated ca capital data capital frame uh, treat.txt uh, rows equal true and uh, uh, row name, I'm sorry, header equals true and row names equals one. So the covdesk file that we just pulled into um, the variable pd, phenotype data, looks like this. There's two columns. Uh, the first row in the first column is blank. The second column, the first row, has the phenotype. So I just said condition. Usually with these data sets, you're, a you're analyzing some kind of cancer patients versus normal patients, so you would just say N versus C, normal versus cancer. Um, you, make, you keep it simple because you're going to have to call on these uh, phenotypes and the, the condition status a lot in your code, so you don't want to make it something really complex that you're going to mess up and capitalize something because it is very case sensitive. So here we see again, this is how we read in the covdesk file, uh, PD, which is phenotype data, read in, read.annotated data frame is the function used by simple affi, treat.txt, header equals true, row.names equals one. Now when I call on that uh, using pdata uh, pd, where pd is the, the phenotype data, what I called it, you can call it anything you like. You can actually spell out phenotype if you like, but um, that will display the exact uh, tab delimited file that I just showed you a second ago and that shows you that it was all read in correctly. Now, to actually read in the cell data, we're going to use something else called read affi. That's the name of the function. So we're going to say phenotype, phenodata, or phenotype data, whatever you like, uh, read affi, file names equal row names, uh, pdata, pd, just like how we displayed the cob desk. Now, actually, to, to follow along, if you have bioconductor case studies, by uh, Robert Gentleman. You'll be able to find it easily on Amazon. I think it's, I mean, I found a couple books on R programming uh, with bioconductor case studies for analyzing microarrays, but this is pretty much like the authority on microarrays and R. So it's, it's like one of a very few handful of books, and you know, the, the other books that I found could have just been different editions of this one. I don't, I don't really remember. But this is the book that you want to look for. It has some pretty good examples. Um, obviously I'm not going to go through like an entire microarray program because I could take like an hour to, to actually talk you through it. But I'm going to show you some of the graphs uh, along with some of the functionality of the program and just give you an idea what it's capable of doing. So uh, let's take a look at some of the graphs now and um, so this is a standard QC plot that you would plot out really before you began anything else, just to make sure that you don't have any crazy outliers in the data. Um, you see here all the cell files listed, um, 
and everything is in blue. If there were outliers, it would be red um, points on the graph. Uh, again, here is a noose plot. Um, the more evenly distributed they are and uh, flat there are, uh, there's, that means that there's not really an outlier. If you see, look on cell 47167.cell, that one's much higher than the rest of them. That one's an outlier, and you know, that data is not as normalized as the rest. It should be kind of examined. Um, the histogram SDS graph here. Um, heat maps can be generated. Um, uh, SAM plots. Uh, Multi-test. This histogram here is uh, generated by multi-test data. Um, basically, it's really handy to have taken a statistics course if you're going to actually delve into this. If you take probability and statistics it will really behoove you uh, before you actually enter into this course because there's a lot of mathematics involved. But um, the R syntax itself is fairly easy. I mean like any programming language uh, with R you do sometimes hit brick walls and you don't understand why you're getting an error but it's it's fairly self-explanatory when there is an error. It tells you what variable it's having a problem with. It, it's, uh, it's a pretty clean program. Um, I haven't actually got it to work on uh, Ubuntu yet. If there are Linux users out there, uh, I'm afraid you're going to have to use it on Windows, at least for the time being. It, it wouldn't load up properly. Maybe I did something wrong, but um, so far I've only gotten it to work on Ubuntu. The latest version that I know of, as of uh, November 2010, is R2.12.0, uh, but they're always coming out with new updates. Uh, hopefully on my next video, or next science video anyway, I wanted to go through some of the Ubuntu uh, command line bioinformatics tools like BLAST and uh, Clustall-W. I hope this was informative. It's it's difficult in a 10 minute session on YouTube to um, actually walk through like an entire or you know any meaningful amount of a programming language but I thought I would introduce R and maybe we can play around with it later if there's any request um, for any specific uh, data sets or anything just let me know.